This is a question I've asked myself the past five years or so is what specifications on a camera do I need for my street photography? Now you could word that as what do I prefer? What specifications do I prefer for my street photography? Because I don't want to get into uh, these blanket absolute statements that say you need this for street photography or you don't need this for street photography talking to my audience that is only you can decide what tools work for you what tools you want to use to create your artwork this is me discussing some of my thought processes and maybe this will give you a hint on where to look and what camera models to consider but the biggest aspect of the camera that I'm going to talk about in this video is resolution or megapixel measurement. What's the megapixel count that you need or prefer for your street photography? We're in an interesting transition phase, I feel like, with Leica just re recently updating the M11 to a really high resolution sensor. Um, and that was preceded by, uh, of course, the SL2. And, and cameras like that that already had a decent resolution in, in those models. And then you have, obviously, Sony has really high-resolution cameras and Nikon and Canon. And they, they have all um, have reached or surpassed the 45 or 45 megapixel plus um, landmark on their, on their cameras. And if you contrast that to let's say 10 years ago where 36 megapixels was pretty much the the max up until the point where the Canon uh, up until the point where Canon released the 5DSR the 5DS and the 5DSR but i feel like right now in this time frame before Fuji film announces their new line of cameras which we all suspect to have a new sensor with higher resolution when there's transition now where all the Fuji film crop sensor cameras are 16, 24, and 26 megapixels, but we're about we're, we are probably about to reach a, a, a another um, milestone with that specification on these cameras. It's looking like one of the new sensors that feels like there might be a, a couple new sensors. One of the new sensors might be 40 plus megapixels on a crop sensor body, which is a a huge jump in resolution. Just like before, you need to always ask yourself, what do you need? What will you make use out of? And what you what do you prefer? One thing to keep in mind, always to keep in mind, is that all these camera manufacturers are companies that have a bottom line, that have a profit margin to protect. They have to make money. I and mean, that's the innate nature of a, of a business. So never forget that that has to be, uh, you know, a top priority for them, no matter what. So if a if company A sells a 12 megapixel camera today and that's all they sell, they're gonna create all their marketing material. They're gonna create all their advertisements, um, all their amb brand ambassadors. They're all gonna tout the benefits of that 12 megapixel sensor and how. It's all you need, and, and you don't need to look for anything higher to get the job done. And, you know, you can print 12 megapixels up to so-and-so size print and so on. They're going to do everything they can to sell that as all you need and even discount uh, cameras with higher resolution because they're selling the specific camera, the specific model at that moment. They're going to do everything they can to sell that, and that's it. Every single company does this. And then years down the line once they come out with a 30 megapixel camera then they're going to tell you how advanced this new sensor is and all the new technology that's included with it and how they've been able to achieve things with this these images that they've never been able to do before and they'll do a really good job and some companies do it better than others to do a really good job of making that new sensor and that new camera feel like 
like this is the first digital camera ever made, almost like those other cameras didn't exist, that this is now the camera that everyone needs to create modern, up-to-date, you know, high quality images. And the cycle continues on and on and on. Um, the same thing happens in, you know, computer technology. Apple is probably the, the, the best at this. Whenever they announce a new product or, or a new piece of technology, they have tunnel vision on how they advertise it and market it. And uh, Steve Jobs was famous for saying that we will never, we will never uh, sell a smartphone, we'll never create a tablet, the tablet will never have a stylus. All these things that he said would never happen ended up happening because at that moment they were concentrating on selling what they had for sale at that time. They weren't saying, yeah, this, is, this device is great, but wait five years or wait a year and a half because we're going to have something that uh, this one doesn't have. They're gonna, we're going to have something worth upgrading. No, they were concentrated on selling that item at that moment. And every tech company, whether it's computers or cameras or whatnot, does the same thing. And it's just something to never forget, always keep in mind. Because you already see uh, marketing, mater marketing material promoting the uh, Leica M11 with this angle where this new sensor is you know, amazing, the resolution, the, the detail that it resolves is unlike, unlike anything we've ever, ever seen in a Leica and all these things that makes it feel like, you know, it, it just really does a really good job of selling that new model. And I have a feeling we're going to see this similar, we, where we could see some of the similar mentality from Fujifilm if they do jump up in resolution as we all suspect that they will. So as they do that, one thing to keep in mind is keep an eye on these used cameras, these Fujifilm cameras that will instantly feel a little dated because they won't have the latest and greatest. Um, but returning back to the original question of this video, what's needed or what do I prefer for my street photography? And my answer for, in terms of answering this, uh, talking about the resolution or the megapixel count, is that that part's not a huge deal. I, I feel like with my experience with Fujifilm, I, I, I feel like 16 megapixels is plenty in terms of uh, megapixels for my street photography. Now, granted, I have chosen the X-Trans 3 and X-Trans 4 sensors for my cameras, but that's not because of megapixel count alone. That's uh, as much to do with dynamic range and the look that those uh, cameras have at higher ISO, specifically 6400 and 12800. I love the look, the, the, the look of the black and whites from those cameras at that high ISO. And that's why I choose those over the 16 megapixels. It's not because of the, 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 the resolution difference. That's just um, an extra an extra difference. Not even I wouldn't even say an added benefit. It's yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to crop in a little bit, but 16 megapixels is plenty. And the XT1 is still one of my favorite cameras of all time. But I wanted to show you just to give you an example because this uh, uh, um, one of the biggest aspects and factors that you should consider when you're answering this question for yourself about w what resolution, what megapixel count do you need is, and you've heard this all before, but I just want to talk about it in a video of my own. You have to ask yourself, where are my images going? Sincerely, where are they going today? Where are they going in the next six months to a year? Not necessarily where they might be going in three years or five years. Don't ignore that, but I think, where are they going now? If you're trying to build a Instagram following, or if you're if you're printing relatively small, probably even up to 26 by 30 or or, or, or somewhere of the, you know of that size, 16 megapixels may be plenty for for you. Um, the the temptation for uh, higher resolution and higher megapixel count is always about the, part of what fuels that is always that what if what if I decide to um, do advertisements for a billboard or pr magazines or something like that, then, then those higher, the high resolution cameras may come in handy. 
Um, but I, I think, and I, this is my, it's benefited me most when I've been able to focus on the relative short term, what I'm using now, what I'm creating for now. And prints about this size, this is eight, eight and a half by 11 sheet, and so is this one. Right now, th this, is the, this is the largest print size I'm concentrating on at the moment. I will start printing larger, um, but I think most of my prints, even if I go larger, most of my prints won't go much larger than um, 11 by 14 or 11 by 17. So even with that size, I'm confident that 16 megapixels would be enough. But I got these two uh, print samples out for this video because both of these were taken, both of these were taken on the Fujifilm XE1, which has the first X-Trans sensor, which is only 16 megapixels. But I love these black and white images that I got from that camera, and they print perfectly on. Uh, on this paper, this is this is paper from Red River, and uh, it's some really high quality paper that I've I, I, I've been printing using. Um, I've been printing on using my Epson uh, printer, but this is only a 16 megapixel, only a 16 megapixel image, and so is the other one, and they and they printed fine. Um, that's the XE1. Great sensor, great camera, and but now I've I've been concentrating my street photography with my uh, uh, X Trans three, like this XH one, and the X Trans four with the XT four. Those have been my main street photography cameras at the moment. But that's not, like I said, that's not just because of resolution or megapixel count that's part of the factor when deciding all this for me. I tried all these cameras. I've tried cameras that had the X-Trans 1, 2, 3, and 4 sensors. And what I found is that because I love shooting the black and white so much, I love the look of the black and whites from these two sensors more than the other two. And that's my biggest, one of my biggest deciding factors in how I decided which camera or cameras that I want and prefer for my street photography. So even though I started this video with what megapixel count or what resolution do you need or prefer for your street photography, the bottom line point for me is that that cannot, that shouldn't be your only deciding factor. You got to understand what style of camera, what brand of camera, what dynamic range and all these other factors that fit your style of street photography. If you have a, uh, a certain color look that you like, and maybe one of these has a certain film simulation that you'd that you'd prefer to use, or if you uh, if you like a certain um, if you like a certain a different a different brand uh, of camera, maybe that brand has different resolution landmarks uh, that may fit you better, or feature sets that may fit you better. But the megapixel count should just, should just be a factor in your camera purchase decision, and for street photography. I think you can get away with a pretty low resolution, more than you more than you might think right off the bat. And one way to, to just to confirm that for yourself is really, really be honest with yourself about where your prints or pictures are going. If you look at Instagram as a place to put digital digital prints, so to speak, you know those don't those won't show probably more than more than even uh, um, a few megapixel camera would be able to take. So you'd be fine that you'd be fine with Instagram. If you're, unless you're printing extremely large or you're printing for a magazine that requests certain specifications, um, 16 megapixels is gonna cover you on the print aspect as well. So you just have to decide what other things on the camera are as important if not more important than resolution or megapixels. I keep coming back to the print because it's an important factor for me. And one of the things I've realized with my prints, and one of the things that uh, this kind of brought me a little peace because I I understand exactly what I'm going for now. I think smaller prints, and this is where I'm at right now: smaller prints and photo books, things that you can hold, things that the person can hold and feel and touch and enjoy. That's where I want to 
uh, be right now. And that's right. That's what I want to create and share and sell. And that being said, that reinforces the notion that uh, 16 megapixels is enough, 24 and 26 is more than enough. And even if Fujifilm does come out with 43 megapixel cameras or whatever that resolution is, I won't upgrade just because of that. I'm not saying I won't upgrade, but it won't be just because of resolution. It will have to be because of other features or the, 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 the combination of everything that they present in the package itself. Um, so my, my answer for myself of what do I need to prefer for, for my street photography resolution wise, I'm taking the, uh, the cue from the Fujifilm products and 16, 24, 26 resolution wise, any three, any, any of those three is fine with me, but because of the other features that combine with everything, the 24 and 26 megapixel cameras are what I choose to create my black and white street photography with. So what about you? Whether you own a camera now or looking to buy a new camera, what resolution or megapixel count are you, are, are, are you good with for the time being, for the next few years? What are you gonna create most of your photography with? Let me know in the comments and that's it for now. Thanks again, guys. I'll talk to you soon.